Now, before I tell you about that, I'll tell you that 51% of home builders in the US have announced that by next year, they will offer solar as an option. So essentially, you build a new house, you check uh, double pane windows, check. A marble counter, check. Solar, check, right? It's just one check. So it goes into your mortgage. And what did I say about the cost of capital? Cost of capital is the most important factor in determining the cost of solar. So what happens when solar gets to a dollar and uh, you finance it with the mortgage? Here's what happens. In Auckland, New Zealand, solar on the rooftop of a house is gonna be six to eight cents per kilowatt hour. How much do you pay right now? Does anyone know how much you pay for electricity? Who said 28 cents? Yeah, 20 something, right? 23 cents, 28 cents. Solar on the rooftop is gonna be six to eight cents in Auckland by 2020. So essentially what this means is that the cost of solar on your rooftop is gonna be cheaper than the cost of transmission and distribution. So even if you generate you know, that hydro or that coal station, that central station at zero, it'll be more expensive than solar because you have to add that cost of transmission. Does that make sense? So at this point, central genera generating stations can't compete. They don't have a prayer. That's why I call it God parity, right? They don't have a prayer. Even if they generate at zero, which is not gonna happen, they don't have a prayer. Um, and even in Auckland, it's gonna happen by 2020. So in fact, because of this, the rate of growth of the solar market is going to accelerate even more in a lot of places. So it's quite possible, and this is the argument that I make in, in, in the book in Clean Disruption, that nearly or all, 100% of the world's energy will be uh, solar by 2030. Now, the other 100% will be wind, by the way, um, or at least a little bit. Um, and you know what's happened? This this is not just you know a magical spreadsheet. In Germany, the largest um, in Germany the largest um, utility um, was called Eon. Is called still. And what what happened in Germany because of the high penetration of wind and solar, uh, power prices went actually down. Wholesale power prices in the day went down with the high penetration of solar, which is another mythology, solar is too expensive and whatnot, right? So as wholesale prices go down, what happens? Central generating stations basically make less revenue, boom, a disruption. Um, so what happened uh, with Eon is as solar and wind penetration went up, their stock went down. Why? Because their revenues went down and their profits went down. And so they recently announced that they're actually splitting the company off and the Eon that they're keeping is the solar and wind trans distribution and customer solution. So essentially all the central generating stations, they're gonna spin off, even hydro. So this is not about renewables versus dirty energy, this is about technologies that are disruptive in energy. Now, another the, this disruption, another technology that I wanna talk about, energy storage. Now, the sunshine only happens in the day, usually, right? Um, and so, at some point you need to, if it's gonna be 100%, you need to store that. Now, in the desert, um, there's a very cheap form of storage but it's thermal storage. It's called molten salt energy storage. That's me, by the way. Um, and the first base load, meaning 24 seven solar power plant in the world, uh, was opened in Spain in 2011. It has 15 hours of energy storage. Molten salt is very cheap. Um, 
but it requires desert type of heat uh, to generate. So we already have base load solar. Uh, molten salt, by the way, is environmentally safe. You could eat the stuff. In fact, I do. Uh, anyone who uses sensitive uh, toothpaste, you know that you're essentially eating potassium nitrate, which is one of the two elements. These are salt. This is like table salt, right? Um, and in Las Vegas, outside Las Vegas, they recently opened another one, uh, base load solar, 10 hours of storage. So next time you go to Las Vegas, you will know that Las Vegas at night is going to be powered or is being powered by solar energy. Now, that doesn't work with PV or wind because it's thermal, not electricity storage. What about storage for PV and wind? 